Hello, welcome pen friends. I'm back with day six through 10 of 30 inks 30 days for April 2021. And I'm just gonna talk about and, and get into my ink journal with these, uh, with these five inks. We have an orange, a green, a kind of a red orange, almost pink, depends on how my eyes sees it, see it. And then uh, a brown, which kind of reminds me of Coco's markings. And this color here, which I can't really, <laughs> I guess it's pink, but I don't know. To me, it's salmon, but um, even that doesn't quite work or sort of a mauve. But we'll get right into the ink journal and we'll, we have comparisons for each one. And that may help us kind of pinpoint some of these colors. So first up was Robert Oster Orange Rumble. It's very, very pretty. And I got the sample from Penfriend KS. Thank you very much. Um, and then I, I found it at Van S for $17 for 50 mil and $2.60 for a four mil sample. Um, it's got very, very nice shading and the flow is really good too. And um, it's kind of that 70s orange color. It, it reminds me of, uh, <laughs> I don't know, something from the past. Um, actually, I have green, kind of an avocado green in my kitchen. <coughs> so I thought it was a really great matchup for the Lamy Safari Terra. Now, it's actually cleaned out already. I don't have the pen here on my desk. but And I thought it compared really well to Robert Oster Burned Orange. But I still... Um, the rumble is just a tad lighter and uh, brighter, so I really liked the burned orange better, but we'll look into comparisons here in a minute. So this is the chromatography and the splatter, and it has no water resistance, making it very um, typical fountain pen ink. Whoops, Coco's wanting to help, but that, that rarely really works out. So <laughs> let's go to the comparison on this color. This ink really is in good company. Um, I love orange inks, and so the, I just really love doing these comparisons. And just for the heck of it, let's uh, I've got Diamine Pumpkin. Let's go ahead and, and put that there just for a minute. You see, that's a, kind of a typical orange, uh, what you'd see in kindergarten when you're, you get an orange crayon or something. So that's that helps us kind of place these. These are darker, more burned oranges. But... Um, the Robert Oster Burned Orange definitely looks a little darker in a nib, and I, I liked it just a little better than the Orange Rumble, but I still liked Rumble. And then I didn't, the, the, the Antelope Canyon, um, I didn't like as much as the Burned Orange either. I guess I've really gotten to like that one. So, um, gosh, it, I love Diamine Autumn Oak, and that has probably a lot more shading but it's, uh, or more pronounced shading, but it's a little bit different shade. Colorverse Martian is gorgeous. Now, that's getting kind of away, a little bit away from this uh, shade of Orange Rumble. In fact, I didn't get out KWZ Monarch. That's one of my favorites, but it's much more similar to Martian um, in color, and so really that's just for comparison. And then there's the Tasha one that I thought kind of compared although that has a little more water resistance. So um, here's J. Arbonne Coraline to Egypt. That's a shimmer ink. Whoops, I'm not sure if we can see it. Oh, and so there we have it. Um, it's in very good company, but I, 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 if I had to pick from these, um, well, in direct contrast, I would pick the burned orange, but then I really like Colorverse Martian, too. It's gorgeous. It's just, it's, there's something about that ink, and I, I've had to stop myself several times from purchasing it because the KWZ Monarch I did purchase, and I don't need two of almost the same, you know, very similar shade like that. So let's move on to, to our Day uh, 7 ink. So day seven was Colorverse Laurel, and uh, I had that in my Lamy Next with a broad nib. Gosh, I didn't even mention what I had. Oh, well, yes, I did. I had this one in the, the Lamy Terra, the orange ink. Sorry about that. My brain just doesn't organize sometimes till I'm in midstream. But this is a dark green. It has some water resistance, and it's a gorgeous ink. It's really, really pretty. I got a, the 15 mil bottle was a, a gift from Penfriend KS. Um, and I did read that it was uh, 
made to match the Opus 88 Colorol in beige. Let's take a look at that one. Um, blue, red, orange, beige. This one, I guess. Yeah, must be it's that one because this is the demonstrator. So it, it kind of matches that the part of the cap and the uh, the barrel on that Opus 88 Colero. So that's neat. Is that what it said? Yeah, Opus 88 Colero. Huh. So let's see. I see shading. Um, also, I see this ink kind of as teal, but I don't know why. And it's just the way my eyeballs pick it up, I guess. But it's a gorgeous green. It's if it's a if it is a teal at all, it leans green. Let's put it that way. Um, oh, and that's the day that I got the the uh, speedball uh, nib and started using um, Nusha's uh, technique at ferocious uh, at ferocious and pretty fountain pens. Uh, and I will be linking her video because at the end of this one, I'm going to talk about how much I've enjoyed doing that and playing around with that pen, but we'll save that for the end. So this is quite interesting chromatography. Let me hold that up. Isn't that something? You could see the ink resistance. See, it leaves a dark slate kind of color there, like a gray. Um, and that is, that's really, really nice. I know a lot of people will enjoy that. This is a beautiful green. And right now let's go ahead and compare it with a few other greens and teals. <laughs> Okay, so right in the middle, Colorverse Laurel. Um, and just to the left is uh, Robert Oster Peppermint. That's a really pretty ink that I think compares well. And I even felt like Scribo Verde Bosco uh, compared quite well. But it, the, the Scribo and the Robert Oster, neither one have that water resistance like this one has. In fact, on this whole panel, this is the most water resistant. Uh, of course, this is by no means all the greens. You'll want to head over to inkswatch.com to do some much more comparing. Um, but I thought it was interesting how it even compared to Diamine Bloody a Absinthe. Now, this ink has tons of red sheen, so that's going to throw off the, uh, the face uh, color of things. It's going to make it look a little different, but I still felt like it was worth comparing. And then this one from the UK, the Pure Pens... Uh, CWM. I wonder if I abbreviated that. I'm not sure. <laughs> it doesn't look right for some reason, but that's a really nice green that kind of compares. It's got a little more red sheen though. And let's see, what did we get when we splattered? Let me see. I actually didn't get a lot of sheen on the splatter for this Colorverse Laurel. I did get plenty of shading in, in spots. You know, that could, I could see the shading really well, even though that's a Lamy broad nib, <clears throat> fairly stiff nib. So here is Ferris Wheel Press Misguided Mistletoe. That's a shimmer ink. Uh, it has gold shimmer, and that's going to, that, that's kind of closer to a forest green, or it, it looks different. And then here's Diamine, a Germany exclusive November Rain, which, see, it's brighter, and it, it doesn't really compare, and yet it, it was in that, it was where my eye went to when I was selecting out of the ones I have. Monteverde California Teal. Um, let's get those right up together. It just makes me think of it, even though this is a lot brighter and it's it's not as dark. And so it does look different, but still made me pull it out of the box. Okay, and Montegrappa Green. Hmm. But it, that's interesting because that one kind of jumps out at me too as having the teal inside of it anyway i could talk all day let's <laughs> let's go on to the, the ink for day eight day eight is like a bright kind of it depends on when i look at it and it depends on what's going on with the lights it it looks red like right here it looks red and then sometimes it, to me it looks very orangish and um if you look at where where the water hit it, it gets tons of pink coming out in the chromatography and in just the water test here. So that might explain it. You get kind of yellow and pink coming out and... 3 p.m. Okay, I think the volume is down on that thing. That's interesting. Um, so I had this in my Jinhao X750 and it's cleaned out now, I believe. Yeah, I only had uh, two pens that ended up inked up uh, that are still inked from this 
segment here. But I like this. It's, it's plenty readable. It's not really obnoxious or anything. But, but it's so interesting because of how my eye picks it up differently. You know, it, it just kind of looks uh, red, orange, maybe even peachy. Just different each time. Hard to categorize. But I think it would make a great... I mean, it says um, Sailor's Delight. So that does indicate sky. And I have seen... I have some pictures on my old camera from Vermont where the, the, the evening sky was just really bright like that. So I really like it. And let's look at some comparisons because that may help uh, if you're unfamiliar with this ink. I probably should have told you to get your sunglasses out. <laughs> These are really bright. I mean, they, they really are. Um, I'm looking especially right above the Van Diemen Sailor's Delight at Sailor uh, Iori. I'm not sure how to say that, but that pink that comes out is extremely intense. And so is the Pelican uh, 4001 Brilliant Red. Although they don't compare, nothing quite compares exactly in my mind to the Van Diemen Sailor's Delight, but these all evoked kind of a similar feel, except maybe Color vs. Kepler's Law got put in there because I needed another one maybe, but <coughs> um, kind of had a similar feel for one reason or another. But that's very interesting too. Um, it's not so much pink came out on this, on this paper, but it did in the ink journal. You know, I, so <laughs> here I am with these that I picked that had quite a bit of pink in them. So that's very interesting, I think, how the eye can still kind of sort that out, especially when you have swatches with the water. Um, but I thought even Diamine Wild Strawberry reminded me of this one. And that has a lot of gold sheen on it, so that can confuse our eyeballs too. Um, but... This is just for fun because I really, I really didn't have anything that looked just like it. But even the um, Pilot of Roshizuku Winter Persimmon, that reminded me of it too. I, even though they're a long ways off. And you get, a, you're looking more orange with this one and a little more red with the Sailor's Delight. Um, God only knows. I'm describing what I'm seeing with my eyes, but I recognize that the camera and screens also play a big role. Um, I, I really remember liking, I did a whole month once of red inks, so I had a lot of red comparisons, and this was one of them, and I was surprised how much I liked that. That really is pretty, the pelican coming out of a nib, and, uh, this one as well, the Pilot of Roshizuku, um, Winter Persimmon. I remember getting that sample, and, and that was one of them, too. So this was really delightful, really fun, and hopefully that gives you an idea sort of of where it falls. So let's move on to day nine. There, so this is my cocoa ink. This is uh, Scribo Classico Sapia, and the sample came in from uh, Van Ness. I, I had made an order, and they included this sample. But I also went to see about availability and all that, and they have the 90 mil, it's those stackable bottles. Let's see if I can reach my bottle. Um, this, is, this isn't the bottle for this ink. Um, actually, Coco's been busy untying the... <laughs> oh my goodness, he gets into my shelf there. But this is how they come, and they're stackable. The, the bottom part is... Um, inverted and so you could just tell I don't have two of them but they stack and it's a really heavy bottle a 90 mil bottle I just wanted to show you because that's really kind of cool and it, it is a large bottle 90 mil so it, it ended up coming out like 39 cents a mil for this ink but this is a really pretty ink and it reminds me it kind of uh, runs the uh, gamut of Coco's uh, colorings he's got really dark coloring he's part Siamese but he also has some of that chocolate light color. You know, um, it looks like somebody... That's how he got his name because to me when I first saw him, I, well, to begin with, I thought he was sick or something because of his eye markings. I couldn't... And he was soaking wet. He'd been outside. The neighbor brought him over. So, um, but I thought he looked like he just stuck his head like in... Remember that Nestle's cocoa that our mothers used to mix in milk, you know, milk with? <laughs> That's, so I just named him Coco that first hour that I had him when I didn't even know I was going to keep him. <laughs> but anyway, um, 
So right off the bat, this one reminded me a little bit of Roar and Klinger Sapia, but then when I compared them face to face, they weren't, um, and we'll see that in a minute, but the flow is really nice and wet with this one. I, I love it. Um, never mind the sticker. I picked up the wrong pen and started writing with it, but anyway, I just put a sticker over it. So this is the chromatography. There's no water resistance. It's very typical, but it kind of has a... I like the range. When you do use water with it, you can get uh, the crusty part here, you know, the, the shading part gets dark, almost black, and then you can get down to a nice light tone. So if I was an artist, I could make a, a little inky cat from my cocoa. Anyway, let's look at the comparisons. Oh, note to self, don't forget James Clear's annual review idea format. It's a great model. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know how that got there, but I know I was taking notes, probably had more than one window open on my computer. And I... Maybe I didn't do an annual review for 2020. That probably would have been a harsh one anyway. So, okay, let's look at the ink comparisons on this because I think that'll be really fun. Okay, so before we really get going, <clears throat> this was day five, Colorverse Coffee Break. And it's just quite a bit brighter. It's got a lot more like orange or red in it. And so I just wanted us to see that. So we are in a different ballpark with the Scribo Classico Sapia. Um, and I left this laying here because from the ink journal, um, well, I was noticing how much it, this part reminds me of the Monteverde Moonstone. And also the idea of where did I get the fact that I thought Roar and Klinger Sapia kind of reminded me because they look so different on the face like this, just looking at these swatch cards. Which, of course, once you get on Tamoy River paper, it, the inks do look quite a bit different. They, um, I don't want to say they flatten, but in a way they do. Uh, they, they do look different. So, let's see here. Let's focus. Um, Montegrappa Coffee Brown, I thought was a real good comparison. And uh, even Caveco Caramel Brown, too. And then Monteverde Moonstone. It seems to lighten up quite a bit more when it gets the water and it's got blue and coming out. So that was interesting. And Monteverde chocolate pudding um, face value there looks a lot similar. I thought that was interesting. And then, of course, this Tasha ink has a lot of uh, water resistance and so does Roaring Clinger Sapia. And Straits Pen Honest Ink... Uh, Bleep Sapia also, whoops, there's a nice white cat here, had quite a bit more water resistance. So you've got choices there. This is an older one um, that I had, Birmingham Black Mold. Now, it looks a lot different. This looks kind of right from the start uh, on this paper. It already looks kind of chalky or, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but you can probably see better than I can explain. So this was a lot of fun because, uh, you know, I kept thinking about Coco and his little markings and, and what color he would look best in a little inky cat. <laughs> I've got to get better with my little water brush and, and with, you know, just sketching and stuff. I'd really like to. So um, last but not least, let's move on to day 10. And honestly, I, I don't know what to call this ink, whether to go for... It's probably going to end up in my pinks because I, I can't see putting it in my reds. And yet, when I went to try to find comparisons, it was just a, a bomb out. I really didn't have very many. Um, and we'll see. I had a few. Um, let's see. This sample was from Pen Friend KS as well. Um, it was, I think, a 10 mil sample that she sent. And it's gorgeous ink. Um, it's even dark enough for me to be readable, so that's neat. It, the problem comes in in me just trying to put it in a category. Here's the um, water test. It leaves kind of a medium gray. It has a little water resistance, not very much, just a little bit. And then, um, let's see if there's anything. I said it looked like salmon. I even got my jar of salmon out of the cupboard. Let's see. <laughs> Whoops. And so when, then when I looked at this, I thought, well, that's a long way. That's more pinky on the, I don't know. It just made me think of salmon. I'm not going to open the can to, <laughs> or anything right now, but <laughs> I use that to make salmon patties and I just love them. Um, 
so I thought that we could compare with pinks some reds and even some oddballs like I have one called corroded tin <coughs> excuse me that I compared it with and so we might as well look at that because I guess I just have a hard time describing this one I still have it inked up I have it in the Lamy all-star and the other one I still have inked up is the uh, cocoa color uh, <laughs> the uh, scribble sapia is in this um twas be go so those are the only two left standing after this five days and this one is probably just inked up because i'm still writing with it today i'm filming right in the middle of the day so i have the rest of the day to write with this one but let's look at the comparisons Okay, this is kind of funny because looking at this, it just looks silly. Um, I really couldn't find anything that compared. So here it is in the middle, Colorverse C Europa. Um, you know, and if you really want to kind of try to make it red, then Robert Oster Lipstick Red, which is one I, I didn't like. I actually like this one in a nib, but this one I just didn't, I didn't care for it that much. Um, and then I felt like sight unseen until I pulled the card out I really thought corroded tin was you know that salmony color which actually ma matches much better with the label on the salmon <laughs> uh, that I thought that was going to be but no not really um, and this is actually going to be I think tomorrow's ink the Graf Von Faber Castile <laughs> I'll let you read it and try to pronounce it. It's sort of pink, but it's also peachy and, and different itself. And then this is a this is a vintage Schaefer script Persian rose, which is gorgeous. I, it actually looks more like these inks up here. So I didn't know what to do with this. In fact, this really threw me off because I felt like J or Volunteer did few. Um, this is a brown though and I thought well maybe this is a demented like sample like it sat in the sun and, and like faded but take a look at this I went into my ink journal with the new technique there and here it is uh, the tear de few um, sorry I'm probably mangling that the J or bond and here's the color verse C Europa so there is something going on there that why it makes me want to compare them but not really. And then here's corroded tin. Totally, um, I can't even describe the color. I guess this is out of my color zone. And then I don't know what was going on, why I put Monteverde Coral there. I think I just didn't want to stop playing with my new pen. So um, this was interesting, but I'm not sure <laughs> if it'll be any help to you. But uh, before we go, I want to tell you which one was my favorite ink and show you the new pen <clears throat> that I've been talking about. Okay, so my favorite of this, this five days was definitely the Scribble Classico Sapia. And I think it's the, the color, it does charm me. It kind of makes me think of Coco. It's got excellent flow, just super superior flow. I, I really like these Scribo inks for that. I, they're, they're excellent. Um, so that was that. And then this is the pen that I'm talking about. It's just a little speedball nib holder. And then um, I got the C4 and 5 um, little nibs. Uh, one of my other nib holders has the... C4. This is the C5 that I've been working with. Uh, so I watched a video that was by Nusha, Ferocious and Pretty Fountain Pens, and I've just been having so much fun in my ink journal. Um, this was the page, the first page I made just practicing with with her technique, and I'm going to go ahead and link her. I, I know I'm probably the last one to the party, so <laughs> it's okay, but you may not have seen it, so maybe you'll be the last one to the party. But she shows how she does her ink cyclopedia. And what I love about it is just that idea that if you get you know several pages you are able to compare like the way I was doing it before with my squares is fine that's fun but it doesn't leave much um, ability to compare um, yeah and most mostly this ink journal is just a mess but uh, I love that of being able to just do this and and then maybe even skip a few more pages and you know I'm just playing right now because this this is just the end of a journal that I'm filling up but using uh, this the back of this pen that just dips and it cleans up real easy and my little water brush that I've had forever um, I had three of them somewhere or two more somewhere and this all together this and this was like under eight dollars so it was really 
<laughs> it's given me a lot of fun, let me put it that way. Um, so I'm going to go face to face and maybe do just five more minutes and uh, I'll see you on the other end. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> so I said which one was my favorite out of this last five days, which was the Scribo Classico Sapia. But what about if I back up all the way to day one, you know, which one's my favorite? Well, that would be the day one. It would be the Sailor, the, the Sailor Acabe, a Manio, Sailor Manio Acabe, that beautiful purple kind of almost magenta. That, that would be it. It's just gorgeous. So, but they're all so pretty in their own right. And, you know, I also really like that Krishna uh, RC Winter. It, it's a uh, lighter toned, and, but it's pink and it's beautiful. Coffee Break, I've still got that in a nib. And also I've still got, um, well, that, the Classico, the Scribo Brown Ink. Um, I think the only reason I have the Colorver C Europa still is because, you know, I need to finish the day with it. I actually wanted to write a letter with it to see if my opinion went up or, or down. It, it'll probably go up because it seemed like it was readable. So as far as other things, this coming week I'm going to be getting my second vaccine. So that's exciting and frightening at the same time, but hopefully that'll all go well and then you know, maybe I'll be able to get a haircut and I don't know about eating in a restaurant. I'm not quite ready for that yet, I guess. But um, it's that time of year where the weather's really nice and it's more than spring like it's summer like here. Um, but I'm noticing my time on my camera, so I won't talk much longer. Um, but this this 30 inks, 30 days is going really well for me. It's, you know, we're one third done. So we've got, you know, two more segments of 10 and four more segments of five. And, you know, I think the reason I'm enjoying it so much this time is that it's been a while, for one thing, since I've done it. And the other thing is that I'm sort of breaking every rule. You know, I, I like to use the same pen because... You know, I'm from the reviewer days where I would use the same pen and nib, but I'm sticking really close by using a, a broad nib. Either I'm using a, a Yowo broad nib or a, a Lamy broad nib, and I know there is a difference, but um, I kind of enjoy the fact that I can keep writing with the ink a little bit longer if I want to and just go ahead and, and ink another pen. So breaking rules because there's too many darn rules, and that's just the way it is right now. Um, I hope you're having as much fun as I am. I'm really, really enjoying that pen. Let me let me grab it. The 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 uh, the speedball with the the C5 nib is so much fun. I, you know, of course the nib is is uh, sharper. It's not like a stub nib. It's a, it's a calligraphy nib. So on the upstrokes and things. What's really interesting is if the ink is wet enough, it'll still glide really well. You know, there have been a couple where it was like, whoa, you know, it doesn't want to, it's got the same amount of ink load, but it doesn't want to really write really well on the upstroke. So that's interesting too. But I really like it because to be able to do the little swatch and then come in and write the name with the same pen. Um, I guess I could do it with the glass nib, but then I'm not truly getting what it's going to look like in a nib, I'm getting it much, much, much darker with my glass nib, which I love the glass nib, but, um, and that's, has worked pretty well, the glass nib has for my uh, coloring index, but for the ink journal where it's on the Tamoy River paper, this is really fun, and you, if you haven't seen her video, it's just wonderful, and you should go and watch it, so, um, I think that's all I'm going to be able to say because I don't know whether this is all going to fit. I never do. But this was the little refill, you know, little uh, ink um, nibs. They just pull in and out. Actually, it's a little bit hard to pull them in and out, but I could do it. So <laughs> I have the other one in one that uh, my friend, pen friend Marilyn gave me. Um, I, I have a terrible time writing with the real. Uh, so I've got two of them ready to go. And this pen, the silver one came with a nib which I can't really make it right and I've seen people do it so I don't know oh this is a zebra G nib oh my goodness okay yeah I'm not very talented when it comes to those I just feel like oh it's scratchy it doesn't doesn't do what I want it to do but these really do and there are several other uh, nib sizes that I want to try now you know gradually right now this has given me plenty to do working on getting my ink journal um 
you know, deciding how I want to do it. It's mostly uh, similar colors that I want to compare. So anyway, I got to go and I hope you're having a good time and happy 30 inks, 30 days and happy spring, happy summer if you happen to be in South Texas. <laughs> Bye for now.